Very good afternoon to you. Thank, thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon, Wilfred, and thank you for having me. Uh, industrial stocks uh, clearly uh, have been jumping. Uh, they're up 13% uh, just this past month, uh, this, sorry, the month to date. And, and I guess uh, you'd say, Leon, that's on hopes of a major economic rebound and hopes for a stimulus as opposed to something that you're already seeing in underlying demand over the past month or two? You know, I, I think as we've come out of the second quarter and, and things have begun to loosen up, automotive certainly is coming back. But non-res construction has been incredibly resilient throughout this year. And we see that strengthening. You know, Wilfred, as we look at backlogs year over year, we're up about 35 percent. So Nucor is really well positioned to um, capitalize on that improvement as well as positioned in as we think about a president-elect Biden administration as we move forward. How do you see uh, President-elect Biden administration influencing the, the steel industry? Pre President Trump campaigned on, on revitalizing this industry, and he made good on that promise by imposing the 25 percent tariffs on foreign steel. Was there a steel renaissance as a result in this country? You know, Sarah, I think uh, there, there's a few things. Nucor is investing currently about $4 billion in, in growth projects, not to get bigger, not to add capacity, but to add capabilities that really change and provide a differentiated value proposition for our customers as well as our shareholders. So things that um, I will continue to be a tireless advocate for as well as our industry are things like infrastructure. We have to have a significant infrastructure bill. We're still driving on roads and bridges designed and built during the Eisenhower administration. Things like trade. We have to have a level playing field in the United States that um, ensure that uh, illegally dumped and subsidized steels cannot make it into the shores of the U.S. And then finally, I think one of the silver linings of COVID is the American population recognizes the overdependence on countries like China for things like PPE and manufacturing of um, uh, medical devices and equipment and pharmaceuticals, that we've got to be a nation that makes and builds things again. Uh, ultimately, though, Leon, is your industry, whether we're talking uh, about tariffs or if we're talking about uh, environmental measures, is your industry one that has benefited from the Trump administration and might suffer under a Biden administration? No, I, I don't see it that way. We've, you know, we've done well under both administrations, whether Democratic or Republican. And again, Nucor is incredibly well positioned. Wilford, we, we've managed through these uh, pandemics and crises because we serve a cyclical marketplace and we understand those markets and we understand the customers. We're sitting on $3.4 billion of cash today. We have a strong investment grade credit rating, a $1.5 undrawn, $1.5 billion undrawn revolver. And so our access to capital to invest in the downturns is going to p propel Nucor to have higher highs and higher lows. Well, thank you for joining us to talk a little bit about it. Leon, good to have you here. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.